Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by MMA veteran Matt Dillanoit. Matt, how are you? Good, man. Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Matt, you got a fight coming up December 13th at VFC 44. How's training been going for the fight? It's good, man. It's good. I I was lucky enough to stay in shape for my last fight, so it's kind of it's been a smooth transition. You're fighting out of Premier Combat Center. What exactly is disorderly conduct? Is that a fight gym? Because all the guys who train at Premier Combat Center, I've noticed when I go to the databases, I've noticed that all the guys who train at Premier Combat Center say they train at disorderly conduct. So I'm just curious, what exactly is disorderly conduct? No, nah, man, there's, there's a story behind that, actually. Um, they're a local management company, and I was, I was associated with them in the past, and they, they did a lot of good things for me. One of the things they did, um, you know, they got my, you know, when you, when you started out when I did, it was 2006. There wasn't really that accurate of a database, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And then uh, you'd fight in some shows that might not have been recognized by a, a sanctioning body because not all the states had, had you know, the athletic commission weren't recognizing it. But one right. of the things they did was they got they got my record all squared away, got the fight put on there from, you know, all, all the fights that I had. And uh, part of what they did when they, when they were doing that was they put the sort of conduct as the association. But I'm actually no longer with them. I'm just uh, trying to manage myself, doing my own thing. So. Oh, okay, okay. I was just curious about that because I keep seeing it on all these different guys who I know train at Premier Combat Center, but I keep seeing disorderly conduct. Now, I'm just curious, who are some of your main training partners when you're preparing for your fights? Right now, uh, it's, you know, there's, there's a big group of guys. It, it, you know, Joe Ellenberg has got a fight coming up the same night uh, in the USB, so we've been getting a lot of training together. I've got, uh, you know, we got some up and comers, Derek Minner. He, he's fighting on a card coming up the week before me. And then uh, we got Dakota Cochran has a fight coming up the week before me. So we're all kind of in there together to get, get the work done. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, how many teammates will be fighting on this card on December 13th? How many guys from Premier Combat Center will be fighting for victory? Shit, man, there's there's a lot of guys on the card. I, don't, I couldn't tell you exactly because we've got quite a few of the amateurs on there. Um, I don't, there's... It's going to be more than half the card, I'm mm-hmm. sure. It'll probably be three quarters of the card will be a premier combat guy. Okay, okay. Now, a lot of fighters say it makes the training better when a lot of the guys on their team have fights coming up, but some guys say that it, it gets kind of crazy because you're you're trying to prepare for your fight, but then at the same time you've got to switch over from preparing for your fight to helping someone else get ready for their fight, and it's kind of a back and forth. How do you find it? Do you find the training gets better when a lot of guys have fights coming up? For me, it's been really good. Um, we've got we've got a couple really good southpaws in the gym, and Michael Wright's a southpaw, so it's been good for me. Um, you know, Mark Scudder, he's out of the gym. He's on the victory card. He's a southpaw. We got uh, one of our amateurs, Austin Stryker. He's he's on the the victory card. He's also a southpaw, and they're both fight right handed guys. So for us, it's it's actually awesome. Just get the look that you need, and you know, with, with everybody else, I mean. I, there's, there's not a whole lot of rounds I have to go with an uh, orthodox fighter right now just because we've got so many guys in there that even when we're doing you know team training, sparring, and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you can get a good 10 rounds in and, and probably you know have all southpaws or, or guys that are willing to go southpaw for you. So it's been great for me. Okay, I see, I see. Now, what about the coaching? Are they pretty good at dividing up the time equally? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, we're a team, but it's a business also. And the guys that, like, you know, a lot of the guys, they'll go to just the regular the regular, regular classes, and they've got a really good structured program with, you know, two nights a week we're doing stand-up, two nights a week we're doing ground. And there's extensive instruction in those classes. They're about an hour, hour and a half each night. I What I do, you know, I... I get the coaches that I want to work with, and I'll do uh, I'll, I'll pay for private, you know, private lessons. Basically, we work it out for you know. I'll give them how, however much you know out of my purse and everything like that to where I can get one on one time. Um, if, with as many fights as I've had, personally for me, you know, when I go into the classes and everything, I'm not a good pad holder. 
you know, I don't, I don't want to be in there holding the pads. I'd rather just be hitting them. And if I, uh, you know, if it costs me a little extra money to get that one on one time to where I'm going in there focusing on, on my specific game plan, you know, that's the stage that I'm at right now. I feel like that's what I need. I'm willing to, willing to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So you don't have a role on the team coaching wise. You're just a fighter who trains there. You know, I wouldn't say that. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the up and coming, you know, they, they definitely like to pick your brain and right. And I'm not, I'm not a snob by any means. I'll give anybody there the time of day. I respect what everybody they're trying to do, and I like to use my experience to kind of, you know, give these guys a little insight on what's going on. You know, a lot of guys will come up and they'll ask you about, you know, should I take this certain fight or not? You know, and you know, you, you, you be honest with them. If you don't think they're ready, then. You know, no one's going to remember that fight that you, you turned down, but everybody's going to remember that fight that's on your record you took too soon and went out and got your ass kicked. But I'm more than happy to, to help the guys in that aspect. And, you know, when we're when we're training together, if I see guys, then they're not doing stuff, you know, proper technique, I'll, I'll do my best to be friendly and kind of show them the right way to do it. But at the same time, I don't ever want to be that know-it-all guy that stops sparring every five minutes to correct somebody. Mm-hmm. So if it's uh, if, if they seek it out, I'm happy to happy to help. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Now, is this all you do for a living? Is fight, or do you have a second job? I uh, I run a construction company here in Omaha, and uh, that's it, we've been pretty successful the past couple of years. I actually took a little bit of a break from fighting to finish up my my bachelor's degree in business, and then uh, to focus on this business that I started with my buddy Justin. And, it's, it's worked out pretty well, right? You know, for that last fight, he did a good job of, of running things. I'm kind of doing the office work while he's out there doing the field work, and then we got the same thing going on for this fight. So it gives me, uh, you know, the income that I need and the, the time I need to be able to put in three practices a day. Mm-hmm. Is that the reason why you didn't fight in 2012? Yeah, you know, I mean, that, there was a, there was a lot going on. Um, it all when I when I took my break originally. I uh, I had just won a fight. It was in the fall, I believe. It was like November, and uh, I had eye surgery after that at TRK. And my intention was to take the the winter off and get back at it in the spring. And at the time, you know, I didn't have my business going. I was I was working bar security. And right when I was getting ready to get back into it, I had a fight set up with uh, Dane Sayers, and I was working security St. Patrick's Day, and ended up getting sucker punched broke my nose, didn't take that fight. And then uh, after that, you know, the whole, I, I started the business and, you know, it kind of put me in a bad spot financially. And I just had to make that, that choice to give myself a backup plan to get something real going on. Because, you know, when you're pushing 30 years old, 31 years old now, it's, you know, the, the window for MMA, it's still open, you know, as open as I want it, but it's going to close eventually. And I got to, got to have something going on to get the kids on otherwise. Do you have a family? Do you have a wife? Do you have kids? No, man. I've, I've actually been pretty fortunate. Um, I've, I've only got me to worry about a couple dogs, so that that definitely makes it easier, you know, with the fighting and not having a whole other set of things to consider when I'm making my decisions. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. I see. Now, I'm just curious, who's going to be cornering you for this fight on December 13th? I'm gonna have uh, the same guys in my corner as, as last time. My my kickboxing coach Kurt Pagani, and then uh, my jiu-jitsu instructor over at uh, Axios training here in, in Omaha, John Hansen. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Now your last fight back at VFC 43, you won a unanimous decision over Eric Deagle. I'm just curious, there was a very big gap of time between your fight at VFC 43 and your your last fight for VFC way back, I think it was in 2006, I want to say, when you fought Dominic Brown at VFC 23. Three, I want to say. I don't have it in front of me, but I think it was VFC 23 when you fought against Dominic Brown. So a, a 20 event gap and many years in this uh, time that, that has passed uh, where you weren't fighting for victory. I'm just curious, why didn't victory bring you back in all those years? Well, you know, victory went through uh, a lot of changes over the time. And back uh, back when I fought Dominic, they were uh, they. They were under different ownership than they were right now, and this was this was back when you know some of the 
of the guys from Omaha were getting their first shots in the USB. And uh, the way that I heard it was the owner at the time got a hold of one of these USB contracts and basically modeled the VSB contract after that. But they had uh, they had a certain number of miles within Omaha or where Victory was operating that you had to get special permission to fight in. And they were trying to make everybody exclusive to Victory at the time. And uh, so I was. I was in that contract. And after the Dominic Brown fight, you, you know, it, it could be a number of things, but I wasn't given an opportunity. And it really it really pissed me off because I, I had to turn down other fights in the area. And uh, it, it, was, it was because I was under this contract. And, you know, it, I, I just thought they were being dicks about it. And, it you know, it rubbed me the wrong way. And then when they went through their different ownership, I just never really got back on board with it until, uh, you know, until recently. They, you know, when, when Ryan picked it up, it was, you know, the victory's been around for a while and it's, it's got a good name and everything, but he's, he's really taking it to the next level, you know. I mean, Victory J was doing his thing and, and it was good. And for the record, Victory J is not, he's not the guy that, that I feel like screwed me over with the contract. There was some other stuff going on. I think Victory J is a great dude. Mm hmm. Okay, but yeah, I mean, it, when Ryan turned it around and everything, I didn't always see eye to eye with him either. You know, we didn't we didn't like each other for a while, as a matter of fact. But both of us kind of saw an opportunity, I think, to to get me back in there and and kind of put our differences aside, just focus on you know having good fights and and making money, I guess. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Now, your last fight at VFC 43, uh, it, w it was a victory, and now you're getting a title fight. Going into that fight, was that something that was on the table? Were you told before that fight, hey, if you win this fight, you'll be fighting for the title? Was that something that was on the table going into that last fight? Um, to be honest with you, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of hype you know, around Dago for his, you know, his few fights he had. I think a lot of people... Thought with me taking the time off that I took off. I mean, first of all, they didn't think I was going to make weight. I mean, not everybody, but there was a good deal of people that didn't think I was going to make the weight. And uh, I think that I think that you know it might have been set up for a title shot for him if if he beat me. You know what I mean? I could be wrong. I don't know. You know what I mean? But okay. uh, it just worked out that that I won the fight and that night. Actually, Brian told me he wanted me to fight for the belt. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it only matters what the people at VFC think, but after that fight, before you were told that you were getting a title fight, did you think that your performance was worthy of a title fight? Did you walk away very happy with your performance? That's a, that's a good question. I wasn't completely happy with my performance. I went into that fight having a 100% stoppage rate, and I finished everybody that I'd beaten to that point. But, you know, going the distance and, and winning, you know, I... I won on all cards. It was it was a pretty good, pretty good win. But you know, I wanted to finish him. I think inside of five rounds, I would have finished him. But it, he's a tough guy, man. You know, I hit him with some good shots, and when he hit the ground, he was he was back up right away. You know, still fighting. And there was also with that big layoff, you know, and dropping down and everything. I put a lot of pressure on myself, and maybe I wasn't as aggressive as I could have been. You know, maybe I could have finished the fight, but. There was a lot of pressure, and uh, I wanted to make sure I came out with a win. So, okay, maybe maybe I coasted a little bit, I guess. But you know, I got the win, and I guess that's what matters. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, why did you decide to drop down to lightweight? Obviously, you, you spent many, many years at welterweight, and then you decided to go down to 155 pounds. Just curious, why did you do that? Was it something that, that should have been done a long time ago, and you were just fighting it? You know, you should be a lightweight, but you're going to stay up at welterweight because it's easier for you to make that weight? Or is it something where you're just looking for a spark in your career? You know, you're 31. I think you're in the prime of your career, and, you know, this is a, a good time for you to make a push into a big show. You're on a good win streak now. Was it something to, to get a spark, or was it something that should have been done a while back? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I I could definitely tell you, had I went in and fought at 170, I don't think that I would be fighting for the welterweight belt this fast. I think that being at 55, you know, it's it's definitely uh, it's made a spark. People, like I said, I don't think thought I could make the weight. But beyond that, I mean, when you're talking regional, there's not a lot of welterweights in the Midwest that I haven't fought. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of 
there's a lot of lightweights that, that, you know, I have yet to fight. So I think that, you know, looking at it that way, I, I gave myself a lot of options, you know, and plus, you know, there's some guys back when I was fighting at welterweight that fought at both lightweight and welterweight that I feel like ducked me a little bit. And, uh, We'll see if they drop to 45 now. <laughs> right, right. Now, the victory belt, having that is a very big deal in the Midwest. That If, if you're fighting on the regional circuit in the Midwest, the victory belt is the one that you got to own. Um, how big of a deal is this for you to be fighting for the belt? It's huge, man. I mean, not to make it bigger than it is, but for me, it's a really big deal just because I feel like I've been on the cusp for a while. I've had a lot of big fights that had I won, you know, a lot of people would think I would push me up to the next level. And, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I lost those fights, unfortunately, but to have the opportunity again to, to be right mentally and everything, it's huge for me because I, I know what comes with it. And when you think about the guys that have, you know, all the guys that have held a victory title, that's a, that's a good group of guys to be to be included in, you know. I'd mm-hmm. like to see my name next to there. Now, this fight against Zach Micklewright is going to be the main event for this card, VFC 44. Is that a big deal to you, to be fighting in a main event, or does it really not matter where you fight on a card? You know, I've, I've been the main event quite a few times. It's, uh, to me, it, 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 it's good, but it sucks to have to wait, you know. It sucks to be the, having, you know, just being there at the same time as everybody else and having to, having to wait for it. But as far as, being the main event and having my name on the post and everything, I think it's, I don't know, a little bit of validation for all the time that I've put in. Because, you know, this is, this is probably one of the biggest shows that, that I'm going to be the main event in. So it, it means quite a bit. Right now, you're 31 years old on a four-fight win streak. Do you look at this opportunity on December 13th? Do you look at it like you got to strike now if you want to make that push to get into a big show? Obviously, on a, on a good win streak, you've looked better than ever. But if you're going to make it into a big show, has right now got to be the time for you to do it? You know, I think so. I, I think so. Um, not just because I'm 31, but right. I've had you know almost 40 fights now. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a realist. Like I said, I, I made a decision a couple of years back to get the business and everything going. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's important to go out and win and, uh, to keep winning, honestly. I, where I'm at mentally, I really don't feel like there's a whole lot of lightweights out there that can beat me. And, you know, validating that is really important to me. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, the time's now. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's, let's put it this way. Back when I fought, and I don't want to name drop anybody, but there's been a couple of fights that going into, I would question whether I was ready, whether I, whether or not I deserve to be there. And when you start doing that, then, you know, it's easy to see the answer is no, man, you don't deserve to be there yet. But I don't have that doubt anymore um, at, at all, really. Like, I, I know I deserve to be there. So as far as, as far as dealing with losing the big fights that I've lost, it's. I think it needed to happen. You know, I I never had an amateur fight. I, I won my first five pro fights, and I had no idea what the hell I was doing. You know, I mm-hmm. I needed to go through those experiences to learn a little bit more about myself and about fighting. And I think now I'm ready to move forward with what I know. Mm-hmm. Just curious, how many fights of the fights that you've lost have you you know? the day after, the the night of the fight, you know, went back to the dressing room and, and looked yourself in the mirror and, and said to yourself, you know what, I think I didn't leave everything in the cage. I think I still have a little bit with me. I, I, I could have done more in that fight. How many fights would you say you said that after? Every one of them, you know. Like, I just, I'm not a good loser, you know, but I'm I'm accountable. So when I when it doesn't go my way, I know, you know, it's, it's it's not hard at all to see where stuff goes wrong, whether it was in the training room weeks before or on the couch weeks before when you should have been in the training room. I mean, there's, there's a number of things I've been through, a lot of different ones. But, yeah, I mean, it's, that's just the way it goes, you know? Right, right. I hear you. I hear you. 
Now, is it UFC or bust for you? Because obviously that's the the pinnacle of the sport. That's where everyone wants to go. Um, everyone who, who starts their MMA career right now, the, the kids who are coming up, up and coming guys, they say they want to be the UFC champion. Th- that's where everyone wants to be. Uh, at this stage in your career, is, is that the only show that you, of the major promotions out there, is that the only show that you have interest in fighting for? No, not at all. Not at all. I, uh, and, you know, that's one of the things I tell some of the up-and-comers when they, when they ask similar questions. There's, uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on right now with MMA. The show, uh, when I fought back in 2010, when I fought in Singapore for uh, martial combat, that show more or less turned into uh, one FC. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of good opportunities over there, I think, in that, in that organization. For me, the appeal is, is you know, being able to travel halfway across the world. That was one of the best experiences I've had since I started fighting, going to Singapore. But, um, you know, I think that especially these young guys coming up, yeah, I mean, the UFC is the NFL of MMA. That's where everybody wants to be. But if they're not ready for you, then, you know, there's no, no sense dwelling on it when you can go get wins in other organizations and get that experience, you know, and maybe travel overseas, overseas and, you know, really soak in everything good about this sport, you know, because it's, it's not just about the UFC. So many guys, they set their sights on the UFC and get in there, and then when they get there, it's like they've accomplished their dream, mm-hmm. you know, just getting there, and then they're two or three fights and out, and I've seen that quite a bit, and it sucks to see your friend or somebody you know go in there with that attitude, but I try, for that reason, mainly I try to just focus on winning and, and enjoying the, the experiences that I get out of it, because it's you know, there's no guarantee. They've got they've got so many lightweights in the UFC. They've got so many welterweights. There's no guarantee that I'll ever get a phone call, no matter how how well I do outside. So sitting and focusing solely on that, I could I could drive myself crazy probably. Mm-hmm. Now, Bellator and World Series of Fighting; those are the other top two organizations in the United States. Have they offered you anything in the past? Obviously, Bellator. They've been running shows in the, the area that you know you're you're operating out of so have any of those organizations offered you anything i haven't i haven't talked directly to anybody from bellator but i've had a couple of fights offered to me you know through other people um this this last show they had in town it was probably three weeks out and they offered me a fight at 55 and you know i offered to do it at a catch weight just because i walk around pretty heavy and i need i need that time to to get down to 55 to do it right and the catch weight wouldn't you know it wasn't going to work out so it it never materialized Mm. okay okay i see i see now coming up on december 13th you're going to be taking on zach micklewright what are your thoughts about him as an opponent as an opponent he reminds me of uh he reminds me of a guy from my gym honestly like almost to the t probably a little more technical than chad these days but Chad Reiner, um, he's one of the first guys out of Omaha to make it to the UFC. He, you know, Zach reminds me a lot of Chad. He's uh, he's kind of a brawler, you know, in your face. He's a grinder. He's, you know, he's going to take some punches. He gives some punches. So he looks, he looks durable. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, what do you think Zach Mickelwright's camp is telling him to do against you in this fight? That's a good question. Um, the most recent footage that they've got of me fighting is, is an all stand up fight. So I don't know I don't know you know, I have I've got no idea. I I don't think that there's I don't think there's any good spots for him. You know, whatever they're telling him, you know, maybe cardio, make sure you're ready to go five rounds if you have to because it's not easy to finish. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, I don't think it's safe for him on the ground. I don't think it's safe for him on the feet. I don't think it's safe for him to show up December 13th to be honest with you right right now I'm not from Nebraska or Iowa but I'm curious, is there a little bit of a rivalry? Obviously, you're a Nebraska guy, he's an Iowa guy, Victory, they, they operate from both of those two states, so is is there a, a little bit of a rivalry when two guys from those two states get together? Well, I read a, a Victory put out a little press release, and it was it was kind of being built that way with Nebraska versus Iowa, but um, yeah, I mean, it's I'm, I'm happy to represent Nebraska in this, if it is, you know what I mean? I, I think that it, it adds a little bit, maybe, for the fans, I guess. But for us guys fighting, 
we've all we've all been fighting in the same shows and the same you know circuits and everything like that for the most part we all know each other pretty well i don't actually know zach but uh you know a lot of the guys here in town like i know joe pearson he's fighting right. brandon Paris, so you know there's just we've all we've all been fighting in the same shows so it's not like there's any kind of serious animosity as far as a line or anything Okay, okay, I see, I see. Now, has Zach Micklewright been on your radar in the past, or is he only now on your radar because you're scheduled to fight him? Honestly, I never heard of Zach before this, um, and that's it's not saying anything one way or the other about him. Um, it just it worked out that way, I guess. But no, I'd never, I'd never heard of Zach before this fight, and then I just you know when they brought his name up, I was I was game for anybody, so I just started doing my research. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Now, I'm just curious, how many tickets have you sold for this event, and how many friends and family will be supporting you on fight night? I've got, for sure, I've got four tables, so that's 40, and I'm trying to trying to promote everything through Cage Sticks. Um, so, as far as what I've sold on Cage Sticks, I don't actually know that number right now, but I think there's going to be a lot of support there. I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. I tried finding you on social media, but I was unsuccessful. Are you big into social media? Um, you can probably find me now on Facebook uh, under Matthew Delanoit. I was I had uh, original MSD was my handle, I suppose, for a while, and there's a story behind that. I I had Facebook for a long time under my my name under Matt Delanoit, and then um, I guess long story short, my uh, my father's cousin was was a boxer way back in the day, and he was the champion of Belgium. Actually, fought Sugar Ray Robinson um, at one point. You can see that on YouTube. But he walked around the streets of Belgium in his later years, swatting at flies that weren't there, and he was punch drunk. So my grandpa is pretty against fighting and had threatened to take me out of his will and everything if I didn't quit. And I wasn't going to quit, so we made a compromise that I would go to school and uh, get a degree and have a backup plan. Well, having the social media, you know, my aunts and uncles, you know, not all of them approve, and they would pick up, you know, get wind that I had a fight coming up, and they didn't think I was supposed to be fighting, and they would call my grandpa. And there was a couple of times when I'm getting ready, you know, warming up in the locker room, my phone rings with my grandpa screaming at me because I'm out there fighting. It was, it was a lot of drama, so I deleted my, my Facebook, and it was probably a year that, that I didn't have one and then when I started it back up I just had my name as original MFB and uh, I, you know that way hopefully the people that know me as MFB would, would be able to find me and my family I guess would be able to oh okay okay I see I knew it had to be a, a good a good story behind it because you know in, in this day and age everyone that, that fights is on there so I knew there had to be a, a good story behind it now Matt last question before I let you go is there anything you're looking to prove and is there anything you're looking to showcase on December 13th yeah um, it's important to me to go out there and finish them you know I'd like to I'd like to get a knockout the way I look at it you know I'm going to punch my way into uh, to a takedown and if he doesn't fall I'm going to take him down, I'm going to stand up in his guard, and I'm going to punch him until he either turns his back or gets TKO'd. I, I, I have to finish this fight. Um, I got a lot of shit for not finishing my last fight, and uh, I think that's important, you know, if you get noticed by, you know, a bigger organization is to go out there and have a good performance, go out there and finish guys, because, you know, on the, on the big screen, decisions are kind of boring to watch, so... That's my focus is to go out there and to finish him. You know, I'd like to, like I said, I'd like to knock him out or TK him. But if he turns, if he turns and gives up his back, then I'll just choke him. Matt, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank? And is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to thank Viking Tattoo for sponsoring me for about eight years now. And uh, Eagle Run Chiropractic, Premier Combat Center, and uh, to all my fans, I can't wait to have you come out and watch me put on a great show on December 13th. Matt, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck December 13th at VFC 44 against Zach McElright. Thanks, man. It's been good talking to you.